Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. On the agenda tonight, we have Tony Joe White, otherwise known as the Swamp Fox, and this is going to be coming from 1980 and he's going to be playing through. Even trolls love rock and roll. So let's get Tony up on screen and see how he gets on. One time I had this little band back home, a rock and roll band. And we was going to play this job one night, and it went too far away, so we was walking. Well, we came up on this long, dark stretch of woods, had an old river running through it. No wooden bridge across the river Well, just as I was about to step up on the bridge Out stepped the troll The almighty troll And he said, hey Looks like y'all going to play somewhere and I said, yes, sir. Because you always want to say yes, sir, to a troll. He said, now look, I hate to mess up you boys' job. But I sure could dig hearing y'all play a little bit. I said, man, we can't just plug up and play right here on the bridge. And the troll said, and I go, cause. But the troll said, hey, and that's all we did. Well, the wind was howling at the night, and the moon was covered up with clouds. I was walking across a bridge on a dead road. I'm just going to jump in here and interrupt this story because the beauty about this performance is the subtlety, all the things that are going on. Just first of all, the way that we've got absolutely solid playing all the time by Jeff Hale on drums here. The tempo is absolutely solid. The foot pedal is absolutely solid. And it has to be because you can imagine if it started to speed up, you'd lose the whole ability to tell a story slowly because you'd be rushing it because of that drum beat going too fast. So absolutely spot on the whole time. And as well, while I'm talking about Jeff, Steve Spear here on bass as well, just absolutely solid as a rhythm section, which has to be the case when you've got this three-piece setup. 
And then we go to Tony, who's not only supplying that narration of the story, but also the vocals in the chorus, the guitar as well. We've got a really clean sound here, and there's a really clever use of the wah-wah pedal here because it gives the guitar almost that voice quality, especially when you start to open and close that wah-wah, going from close to open especially, giving it that wah sound, turning it into that voice, which in this setting really does make it sound like another voice in the track, like the voice of the troll. There's a reason that it has been chosen. Also, the way that Tony delivers the story, the way that he tells it, I think it's something to do with his accent, and it's probably just me being from the UK. It's just an interesting voice to listen to when he's telling that story, and it's an interesting story. But then when he gets into his vocals, again, we've got that great contrast from from just having the spoken word to the sung word. So now we're getting that melody in there. And it's such a great change up because now we've got two definite sections to the song. We've got the storytelling in the verses and we've got the chorus, that melodic repeat of those lyrics. So there's something familiar in the middle there. And again, totally freeform here, the way that Tony's just putting in those lyrics, but half laughing sometimes because it's something that he's just throwing in on the fly. And that is totally dependent on having a solid foundation in that back line who are just going to loop it around for you, wait for your cue, and then get into that change of chord for the chorus. And when we analyze that this is over five minutes in length, and we've only really got two chords going on, it is so interesting considering how basic the setup is, and also the fact that Tony's tone is so clean. There's no effect on there other than that wah-wah that he's using to give it that expression. And the lines that he's throwing in there, just really cool blues lines and throwaway lines, and the subtlety in what he's doing in terms of having that vocal, but then having the voice in between those vocals. It's something that you'll see all the great blues players do. It's always that call and response. You very rarely see guys playing lead who are playing the blues singing at the same time, especially having different lines. You'll only ever really find that where they're singing the same lines as the guitar. So it's like having a duet with a guitar. There's a reason that it's done. It's just keeping the interest the whole time. You've either got a vocal that is keeping your attention or the spoken word vocal that we've got in this case, or the lead guitar, effective vocal voice coming out of the guitar. It's always gonna give you that focal point. And Tony had such a unique quality to his voice as well in the tone. He didn't make any mistakes in terms of trying to sound like other singers. He just sang the way that he sang. And especially in this case, when you've got somebody who's telling a story and not singing, when they then start singing, you want that voice to be at least like the voice you've been listening to telling the story. Also, it just sound weird. You sometimes do have singers that speak in one voice and then they start singing and it sounds totally different. And Sometimes it can be hard to connect to that singing voice because you've heard them talk and you know how they talk. And all the greatest singers have the same tone, the same connection, all the way through their voice in terms of the range from all the low notes all the way up to the high notes is that same consistent tone. Once you can connect vocally at any range, that's the job done. You can work on your range if you want to get a little bit more of a crescendo, for example, at the end of a track, really leave the high note until the end, but getting the connection is the most important thing. There's been plenty of singers who haven't had a massive range, but they've had a great vocal quality and a great vocal tone. And that is what it's all about, connecting with an audience and telling a great story like Tony does here. Another thing I want to point out that's really subtle, but you'll notice it if you watch the video back, is the way that Tony changes his playing dynamically as we work our way through the track. He doesn't suddenly go to an overdriven tone, but what he does at the beginning of the track is very understated. He throws in a few little lead lines and the rhythm is mostly downstrokes, but quite sparsely thrown in there. He's not really putting in a lot. After the first chorus, you'll notice how he really leans into that strumming. Now, literally just double time strumming the whole time. And then we get into that second chorus. And then after that, he brings it back down again. So these really subtle changes in guitar technique that he 
puts in and then takes out, it always just keeps a level of interest there rather than just having one way of playing throughout the whole track. And sometimes you will find players that do that who just strum their guitar the same rate at the same level for five minutes and it doesn't really help keeping the dynamics in there because if you're hitting them all at one level in terms of the audience, there's no light and shade. You need to change, even in this setting, well, especially in this setting, when it's so stripped back, you've got to do everything you can to try and keep the audience interested, not only with your voice, your vocal delivery, but also your guitar, changing the dynamic sound of the guitar and just changing techniques. Let's check out the rest of the performance. So damn, man, we're playing our guts out. <laughs> he said, would you mind if I borrowed that old guitar? And showed you a lick. Well, since we never heard of Joel play, we let him have it. And he goes like this right here. guitar back and the troll goes why and there we have it and as I was saying, the way that Tony just leans into that guitar, the great thing is that when you play with a wide dynamic range and you've got the ability to do that with your techniques on the guitar, it means that when you do start to lean into something, it has so much more impact, it's so much more dramatic because it's just come from such a small place to such a loud place and then you can go all the way back. And this is just a great example of pulling off a three-piece performance with minimal effect minimal setup but everybody being absolutely rock solid in their playing and all the way through drums bass and guitar and the way that Tony gives you his voice but also the voice of the guitar changes up the dynamics within the performance it means that five minutes has gone past and you don't really notice it because you've been listening to the story and the playing has been so interesting along the way as well even though in this case because you're listening to the story so much a lot of those elements that Tony's throwing in on the guitar might fly under the radar because the story's so interesting but it's one of those things that the great players always do this they'll be all over their guitar dynamically a great example when Tony was explaining the troll taking his guitar and then this is what he played and what Tony did play I think we had just a tiny bit of distortion added to the sound but nothing really noteworthy really really clean still which means that if you are going to make a mistake it's absolutely going to stand out like a sore thumb, especially considering Tony hasn't got the luxury here of a rhythm player is going to be backing him up. It's just all on Tony. And the run that he's throwing in there, all of those alternate picks, we actually got a great angle to see that in action because he absolutely nails that run and on such a clean tone. Just a really cool delivery on that guitar. And I just want to talk about Tony's songwriting as well, because he could write a great track. He wrote a couple of tracks for Tina Turner. One of those was Steamy Windows, which was a massive hit. It got into the top 40 of pretty much every country that exists. And also he wrote Undercover Agent for the Blues. And on that album, which was called Foreign Affair, he played guitar and synthesizer on a track as well and harmonica. So he got fully involved with that album. And another one of Tony's tracks called Poke Salad Annie, was covered by Elvis Presley in the 70s and certainly in the UK that got to number two so that was a big hit for Elvis Presley over here unfortunately it wasn't a hit for Tony at the time when he wrote it and it was also covered by Tom Jones so it was one of those tracks that other artists took on and had success with
So great performer, musician, and storyteller as well as we can tell from this video, but then also the hardest thing of all, writing, just writing hits and writing something that's gonna connect with people en masse. And Tony had the melodic ear to do that as well. So really an all-round performer, but again, massive shout out to Jeff and Steve here, because as a back line, they absolutely nail this the whole way through the performance. They don't miss a beat. But thank you so much for suggesting this video for me to take a look at and keep those suggestions coming in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think and if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you guys at the next one. Rock!